It's been about 10 months since the Galaxy Z Fold 2 launch, but almost every time I've picked it up since then, it just feels refreshing. You know, smartphones these days are getting boring, and as a person who's covered smartphones for many, many years, this makes me sad. So before the Z Fold 3 comes out, let's take one last look at the Z Fold 2. I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja, and if you love tech and everything from the smart home to the smartphone, hit the subscribe button and ring that bell notification so you never missed another video. Today's video was made possible by Trademore. Look guys, I know you love smartphones, tablets, and smart watches, and you may have a few of them sitting around that's just collecting dust. If they're in a good condition, sell it to Trademore. Trademore is a website used to buy and sell tech. What makes Trade More different is that as soon as they receive your device, you get paid. You don't need to wait for it to sell and haggle and negotiate, it's all done for you. Now as a buyer, each device is inspected so you know exactly what you're getting. Hit my links down below in the description to get started with Trade More. Look, the Z Fold 2 is an engineering beast. And unlike the original Fold, it's way more premium and durable. When you pick it up, it's solid in the hand, and while it may be a thick boy when it's closed, but once you open it up, it's totally worth it. If you've never seen a Fold in person, do yourself a favor and check one out. It honestly feels like something out of a sci-fi movie, and that feeling never gets old when you open the phone. Now this little crease in the middle that you see is a non-factor when using the phone. It's something you just don't notice day to day as you're using it. Samsung's premium material choices helps with the experience, but it has been reported from daily users that the hinge has some noticeable changes after using it for quite some time. Things start to get inside and the mechanism to open and close isn't as smooth as it was day one. There also isn't any IP certification, meaning dust and debris and other things can actually get into that hinge that can cause this problem. Now this Z Fold that I have isn't a daily driver, isn't something I've used every day, so I'm not experiencing that. Now the outside is a 6.23 inch display. It's a super AMOLED with Gorilla Glass Victus, while the inside is a foldable dynamic AMOLED 2X at 7.6 inches Quad HD Plus at 120 Hertz. Some say the outside panel is a bit small, but I think for seeing messages and maybe a quick one word response, I think it's just fine. This phone has the complete spec package. Although we do need to talk about that there is gonna be a drawback with the folding screen. When you use the phone in tablet mode, the inside display may scratch easier than a typical flagship just because the type of material they're using is not that stronger glass. Even on the outside, particularly if you drop it, it might lead to the phone breaking because it's 282 grams and the weird shape just makes it fall awkwardly sometimes. I've seen some drop tests and this phone doesn't hold up pretty well. I will say when using this phone, you can't use it like a normal phone. It's almost meant to be used with the bigger screen. It just makes it for a more immersive experience when you're watching multimedia content, when you transition from a small screen and then you pop it open and that same content is now on the larger screen. And this is really seamless, especially with supported applications. I would love that if all applications would do this, but not all apps would actually do this. There's some apps that you have it on the small screen, you open it up, and it doesn't show you that big display when you open it up, you still have to reopen the app. Um, it is something that sort of ruins the cohesiveness of the phone, but let me tell you, when you have the right app open, like if you're watching a YouTube video, you click the link, then you open it up, and then you're greeted with the video in that same location. There is nothing like it on mobile at all. Now, with all the bells and whistles on the display, let's not forget that this is a flagship at the end of the day. It has last year's Snapdragon 865 Plus, it has 5G chip and 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And yeah, it runs really good. Things are very smooth and I haven't ran into any problems at all when running applications and using the big screen or the small screen. I think Samsung's One UI is pretty updated on top of Android 11 and we most likely will be seeing Android 12 on this phone too. And that's a big up to Samsung because historically over the years they haven't been updating but recently they really have been updating their flagship phones. Now there are a couple things with this phone that could be improved and that's build quality, cameras, and batteries. Now there's two 10 megapixel selfie cameras on here and a triple 12 megapixel setup, which is almost like borrowed from the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. I think the pictures are identical. So you're not getting like current flagship performance that you would like to see, but I still think the camera is very good in most situations. It does struggle a little bit in low light, but when you're out and about, I think this camera is very capable to shoot really nice pictures. 
but it doesn't compare it to the Ultra lineup that has those zoom lenses and things like that. I think this is just a different type of camera that's really not made for that. And also video is pretty solid too. Um, have no major complaints with that. Once again, when you're out and about, I actually find it easier to hold with two hands to get you a more stable shot. Now, some people may see this as a drawback. I actually see it as an advantage. The fingerprint scanner is not in display, it's on the side. And I find on the side to be much more accurate and easier to press, um, especially when unlocking the phone, you can just get your hand on the side and then it unlocks. Now, secondly, the battery, it's 4,500 milliamp, and I think it's great for regular smartphone, but when this phone's essentially a tablet, you're gonna use it more, and you're gonna do more intensive things. Instead of going home, grabbing your tablet, or grabbing your computer, you feel very comfortable using it on this phone, and so what happens is you're using it a lot more. Um, there is a 25 watt fast charger in the box, and then there's 11 watt reverse wireless charging too, so you can charge other products too off the back of the phone. And once again, I think, you know, this is the second version of the phone and hopefully Samsung will be able to put a larger battery in the Z Fold 3, because that's one thing that sort of holds it back. Now looking ahead to the Z Fold 3, we have to really appreciate how far the Z Fold 2 has came compared to the Galaxy Fold in, in general. Um, you have to see that there are a ton of changes between the builds of these phones, the quality of display, and the quality of the, of the mechanism. So you have to assume that the Z Fold 3 is gonna be that much better. Now the Z Fold 2 wasn't a phone that I personally purchased for myself because I just didn't feel that it was ready yet, but the Z Fold 3 is definitely gonna be on my short list. I still think the Z Fold 2 is a very capable phone today. If you're someone that's more budget conscious and you don't wanna buy a brand new phone, you always like to wait, I think the Z Fold 2 right now is at a really great price. And when the Z Fold 3 comes out, maybe in a month or maybe two months, you'll see that the Z Fold 2 price continues to drop. Anyways, guys, Kevin the Tech Ninja, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.